What's going on everybody? Hanging out with Casper here after my tours today and we want to do one another of our uh, croc talk podcast kind of things, whatever I'm going to call it. I don't know, croc talk might fit, but anyway, so I wanted to cover a uh, question somebody asked recently in more detail. What are the differences between male and female alligators, right? So, I mean, the biggest difference is obviously one of them has a, uh, yeah, you already know that part, okay? <laughs> but yeah, so there are very clear anatomical differences um but uh well they're they're very clear when you get really personal but if you're not up close and physically personable uh you may not be able to tell so basically what i always tell people is that uh, if it's over eight feet it's probably going to be a male if it's under eight feet it could be male or female you don't know unless you probe them and that's what i mean by getting really personal uh typically how we do probe them in the field with an adult is you uh they have what's called a cloaca right underneath here between the legs there's an opening it is the all purpose opening all things come and go from that opening uh this means reproductive and excretory so going to the bathroom that kind of a thing all that happens through the cloaca right so when you go to check one in the field after we catch them you do probe them with your finger yeah it's pretty gross you got to stick it up there and basically if it pokes back it's a boy that's kind of how it works um so i know that sounds really crude and it sounds like i'm making a joke i'm not that's literally how we check them it's not a joke okay so uh that is the way to do it now i said uh usually if it's over eight feet, it's probably gonna be a male. The reason I'm using such uh, you know, ambiguous terms is because the record female was 11 feet. That is huge. I've never seen a female that big, but they can't get that big. So that's why when we look at something like him, um, we know Casper's a male because we have checked, like I was talking about. Uh, there go the peacocks again. Again, if you love them, please take one home with you. We, yeah. I want him to get all of them. Yes, you can have, taste the rainbow, buddy. I hope you eat all of them. I can't stand those things. No, they're beautiful, don't get me wrong, you know, but yeah, they are, they are super annoying. Uh, but anyways, all over the place here. So, if it's over eight feet, probably a male. Again, females can get that big, but it's not common. Um, of the alligators that I personally see and interact with, uh, very, very, very rarely do we ever have females that are over eight feet. Uh, but of course it can happen, right? So that's why I'm saying the only way to know for sure is if you were to probe them. Okay, now other ways to know, obviously if it laid eggs, right? Then you know that was a female. Um, but as far as their behavior goes, if we didn't probe the animal, and if it's in that eight foot size class, let's just simplify this, right? So if it's eight foot and we are not able to probe it, how do we know if it's male or female? We don't. There is no way to be certain about that unless you were to see nesting behavior. Um, and then there's also bellowing. That's another thing that we can you know, look at if you have the opportunity to see them bellowing. Uh, when the males bellow, I, you've seen lots of videos of him bellowing. You know, they'll arch their head and tail and they, the males do this like really deep, like moo, it's really cool. And you'll see the water go up in their back like reverse raindrops from the powerful low frequency bass they're producing. When the females do it, uh, you'll see them, they do the same body posture, but the females are like Meh. Like it's, it's, it's a very different sound. And so I can very easily tell the difference in sound between males and females in my experience. Now I have had people uh, tell me from other facilities uh, that they have had their females actually do the water dance too. I have never seen that. Um, I've worked at a lot of alligators and uh, I have never seen a female bellow produce the water dance. And it is generally considered that only males produce the water dance. Um, but again, a friend of mine who works at another facility said that he has a female that does. So maybe that'll change things, you know, but so we could say generally speaking, the males will produce that water dance when they bellow the females will not. Uh, the males have a much deeper, more bass sound to them. The females, again, do not. Um, and then size class, males generally get much larger than females, but you could have a young male, you know, that kind of thing too. So either way, the point I'm trying to get across there is if you were to just see an alligator swimming and it's eight feet and it's over there and you're not able to probe it or check it and you're not seeing courtship behavior or nesting behavior, how do you know? You don't know. There is no way to tell the gender of that alligator from that position. And and uh, just because I know people are probably going to be weird about this in the comments, we are not touching anything on the gender topic outside of what we're talking about, specifically with alligators. I'm not even, I'm not going there, okay? But anyways, as far as the alligators go, those are some of the ways that we can tell male from female apart. Now, what about behaviorally? So 
when we talk about male and female alligators behavior, uh, there really is no difference that I notice um, outside of breeding behavior. So as far as how they interact with me, no difference at all. And how I train them, no difference at all. Um, you know, if you guys saw, I used to have Cracker Jack in here doing the tours with Casper. I'd swim with her every tour too. Um, you know, she's pretty snappy though, but that's more of an individual to that specific animal, not a generalization of female alligators. I've had other female gators that are more chill. Uh, so that's a more individual personality thing. So anyways, though, um, as far as how I work with them and how I interact with them, male, female, doesn't matter to me. It makes no difference in my work with them. Now, of course, with each other, there's going to be, you know, differences in behavior and how they interact with each other. Of course, you know, a male will be typically, uh, they can be more territorial towards another male and more accepting of a female. Absolutely. You know, um, so there, there's uh, differences in that sort of way. And then also, of course, in courtship and uh, breeding and nesting behavior. Nesting behavior is probably the biggest one right there. You know, the female will construct the nest out of leaves and debris, and she will defend that nest. And uh, now here's the thing, though. There's good moms, there's bad moms, just like people. You know, there's some good ones, there's some bad ones. A good mother alligator will protect her nest and her babies, and she will protect them for the first uh, year or two of their life if she's a really good mom. But I've seen some mother alligators. I got to go uh, work in research checking alligator nests before. Really, really cool. I got to do that. And some of the mother alligators don't do anything at all. You know, so we often think of mother alligators as very aggressive towards any threat to their babies, which they can be. But again, it's not always. It does vary by individual. So I've had some other alligators that don't do anything. You can pick up the eggs and pick up the babies right there and she just watches you. And of course, you know, these are differences in individual animals. And in the wild, those babies would have a lower chance of survival than if they had a better mom, right? Um, so that does vary. Now, if she is very protective, she will come charging after you. This is the only time when I'm gonna tell you that I'll, an alligator will charge you and chase you. Otherwise, they don't do this, you know, as you know, on land, that kind of a thing. They're not going to come running after anybody on land and charge you in a predatory way. But if you're going up on a nest, the mother alligator will charge you. And that's the only time I use this term. I find it acceptable and in use of alligators is when a mother is defending her nest. Right. So that's where they will charge you. They will come up after you. They will chase you, but they're only chasing you away. As soon as you get away from the nest, they stop. You know, they're defending the nest. They're defending the babies. They're not trying to get you. They're trying to get you away from their babies. Okay, so that's protective behavior, you know. So I just like to make that very clear the way that people always talk about, oh, they charge you and chase you. I'm like, no, no, no. Normally, they don't ever do that. That That's a nest protective behavior. Casper, come here. People want to see you. They don't want to just see me talking the whole time. We want to have you in here too. Come on back, buddy. Send him over there. Hi. Hello. Hi, big guy. Oh, you eat that leaf? Yeah. You guys thought he was going to rip my head off, didn't you? Uh-huh. I know how you people are in the comments. Just waiting for me to die. I know, he's just going for a leaf there. But uh, but anyway, so so that's a big one right there. Um, now, once the babies uh, hatch out of the egg, not only is the mother alligator defensive of the nest and the male is not, uh, when the babies are ready to hatch, they will call their mom from inside the nest. They'll do that little chirp and meow, meow. And the mother will come over and she will carry her babies from the nest to the water in her mouth. Now, this is the same mouth, the same set of jaws. They could literally like grab your arm and rip it right off your body. And she can carry the babies very gently, gingerly. They do have uh, total control of the amount of pressure they want to exert on their jaws. Uh, they can choose to barely touch something and carry it, or they could choose to absolutely crush it full power. So they have choice in what they want to do there. So she will carry them. And then if they need the help, she'll even crack the egg open with her teeth and help the baby out of the egg. Really, really cool. Okay, and then once they're out, like I said earlier, she will then protect the babies, depending on how good of a mom she is, the first year or two, something along those lines. Now, there's also evidence showing male alligators occasionally protecting babies too, but then there's also a lot of other evidence showing male alligators eating baby alligators. Okay, so there's some variability there. So you don't want to say it as a rule that the the males eat babies, even though they do sometimes, because there's also showing where they will protect their own babies sometimes, right? So variability there. Um, that's the thing in nature, guys. Uh, nature doesn't like rules. Nature does not like to be like, this is what happens every time, all the time, 100%. 
you know, that's why like people always speak in absolutes, you know, only a Sith speaks in absolutes, guys. Sorry, I had a nerd for a sec. But no, really though, um, don't speak in absolutes, you know, don't be like, oh, they always do this every time. If you notice, I speak very specifically whenever I'm talking about these guys, they usually do this. It'll probably do this. They often do this. I speak in vague terms because a lot of times they will break the rules rules right you know they'll, they'll break the rules they'll do things differently than what we normally expect them to do and we're learning new things all the time new behaviors all the time and there are always going to be moments that are going to change your perception or what you think is supposed to happen they're going to change these things you know so that's why you know I, I just try to talk more in generalizations and like oh this is probably what's going to happen that is likely what's going to happen but uh, you know just try to keep in mind that things change different stuff happens weird stuff happens and that they're individual animals and uh yeah they'll do different things sometimes but anyways that pretty much covers i think all the uh you know male female alligator differences and behavior and how to tell them apart and all that kind of stuff um i think that covers everything let me know how i did let me know if you have any questions in the comments guys and also leave a comment let me know what you would like me to talk about on the next video you know give me some other topics to discuss on a croc talk with casper here and uh, other than that hope you enjoyed it leave a comment like subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you next time